Hello YouTube, this is Philip Ulrich and you're watching my channel. Today I have the DJI Smart Controller. This is going to be the first of a three, maybe four part um, video series I'm doing on it before I have to give it back. I am not sponsored by DJI. This is a sample unit, but I got it from a friend and I'm just borrowing it for this week. So I have had it for a week now and had a lot of time to mess with it, figure out what it can do and what it can't do, and figure out where it disappoints me and where it makes me really happy. So I have a list of 12 things that I think that you need to know before you buy a DJI Smart Controller. So let's start with number one. Um, and these are in no particular order besides this one because I think this is what people are most interested in because a lot of people use Litchi. Litchi does install, but Litchi does not connect to the DJI Mavic 2 Pro or Zoom for that matter. There's something um, I guess DJI has implemented on their uh, Android OS that prevents it from accessing it or maybe it's a feature that they didn't add. Uh, but either way, I've reached out to uh, Litchi support on this and they said that their hands are tied. Um, they didn't know whether or not it was going to work on their remote controller, but I've pretty much been able to determine that it will not. And uh, they said that if we want DJI to support it, that we'll need to reach out to DJI ourselves and let them know that it's something that we wanna see. So if, if you are interested in this controller, and if you're interested in Litchi, reach out to DJI and let them know that's something you're very interested in. So let's talk about point number two. The screen is much brighter than anything else that you can get, essentially. Um, I say essentially because I'm sure that there's something out there that you can get, but the major brand name devices such as uh, LG and, and Samsung, and they, they don't have the, the brightness that this does, unfortunately. And it's, it's the same brightness and I think even the same screen as the Crystal Sky. It puts out 1,000 nits of brightness, um, whereas if you think about the iPhone X, um, it only puts out 679 nits. And actually, as of last summer, that is the highest outputting smartphone that there is, with the exception of one. And that one is the LG G7 Thin Q, and that has an outdoor mode that boosts it to supposedly 1,000 nits. It actually ends up being about 920 nits, and that only lasts for three minutes. So if you want the same brightness on this screen, as far as the brand name devices out there are concerned, you're limited to the LG G7 Thin Q, and even then you only get three minutes of that brightness, and then it turns off. Now there's one more thing about this that actually makes it really cool, and that's called SRE mode, and that's uh, Screen Readability Enhancement. There are three different options. There's overall enhancement that enhances both shadows and highlights. There's dark part enhancement, which just um, enhances the shadows. And then there's bright part enhancement, which just enhances the, the, the highlights. Now, I realize that I can't actually show you this with the screen recording, just because it actually makes adjustments to the screen itself. But let me see if I can show you uh, just on this camera here. So as you can see, I have overall enhanced on here. I'm gonna go ahead and close that menu. That's overall enhanced. If we go back and turn that off, There's actually a pretty noticeable difference, at least to me. I'm not sure how well it'll show on the camera, but uh, if, if it doesn't show well, you'll have to believe me that I really like it. Uh, and granted, that's a personal opinion. You might or might not appreciate SRE as much as I do, but I think it's a worthwhile feature. So let's talk about number three. Number three is that the battery is pretty freaking awesome. And I'm going to be doing another video as part of the series. I'm talking about the battery itself. So if we take the testing that Ray said drone did at 60%, 60% brightness on the screen, it lasted three hours and 40 minutes of flying. So I yesterday went to a park and flew this thing at 100% brightness to see how long that would last. It ended up lasting two hours and 30 minutes. So at 100% brightness, especially at 1000 nits, I don't even know if my phone would be stay powered on for that long, let alone something that's transmitting video from a drone to this controller and then displaying it to me. That is pretty impressive in my opinion. If you are interested in the, the rest of the stats on the battery, make sure you check out my video. If you're watching this the day of release, it should be posted in a couple days from now. Otherwise, just look at my recent videos and you should see it there already. And that leads us to number four. It's not cheap, not at all. In fact, at $650 at the time of this recording, I would rather buy the BT300 uh, FPVs that I, I did a video on. Uh, if you haven't seen that, I definitely recommend watching it. I'll include a link in the description, but definitely check that out. It was a cool video and I really enjoy those. But yeah, $650 is pretty bizarre for this. 
Um, you can you could argue though that let's say let's talk about the uh, the Phantom 4 Pro V2 remote that I believe on DJ's website if you buy it separately is seven hundred and fifty dollars something along those lines. You could argue that this is actually cheaper than that, but at the same time that was included with the drone if you bought the plus package and I believe that was available when it first came out. This is an additional add-on. A lot of people have already bought drones and they're not going to be buying a new one just so that they can get a, this controller included with it, which sucks. But at the same time, I'm sure the price will be going down. Just like the DJI goggles started off really expensive and slowly and slowly and slowly have lost value to the point where you can pick up a, a pair of DJI goggles non-racing edition for 100 bucks. I'm sure this will do the same thing. And at this time, um, the education discounts and the, uh, the the DJI Select discounts aren't working. I'm sure after they catch up with stock and after they uh, catch up with the FCC issues they're running into with the government shutdown, I'm sure after all that happens, they'll eventually add it, the add the ability to use the coupons on these. But until then, at six hundred fifty dollars, it's hard to recommend to anyone, even myself. I I don't know if I'm going to go buy one. And that leads to number five. So number five is it is fast and I have not seen any performance issues or stability issues on it at all. I've been using it about, for about a week now again and I, I've been using it quite extensively. In fact, yesterday I had the drone up in the air for two hours and 30 minutes essentially and I had no issues at all. And I've done other testing aside from that as well and I, I've, it's, I've not seen any issues. It's lightning fast. The, the interface is awesome looking. It's it's simple to the point where it's it's you just click on something, you're good to go. This is an awesome interface and I really like it a lot. So a lot of you have bought the Fly More package or have a Fly More bag uh, one way or another and want to know whether or not it'll fit. So I'm going to go ahead and put everything in there for you and we're going to look at how it fits. Alright, so obviously we know how the Mavic 2 fits in here. Normally this shelf will be folded down with one battery underneath a controller on one side and battery on the other side. First thing you need to do is fold this up. So then we're going to take the controller and put the screen side towards the drone where all that padding is. That's because we need this side over here available for batteries and we don't want to scratch up the screen. Now what you can fit in here at this point really depends on your level of comfort. I really only feel like I can put one in without damaging the grip on the back of the controller, but I can also actually fit in two if I try really hard. So if you're going to fit in either one or two, you're going to want them to be vertical. So let's put one in here. So as you can see at this point, I have a little bit of space left here for another battery. If I put the other battery in, it'll just barely fit in there. Like that. So in theory, you can still fit everything in here when you're using the smart controller, but I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend, if anything, just one extra battery like this so that you don't damage the controller or anything like that. But yes, it does fit into the Fly More combo bag. I definitely don't think it was engineered too, but it just happened to fit in there very snugly. As you can see, I definitely didn't think about the order of these because now I have to unpack it again and then put it up in the air. Alright, so now we are at point number seven, and that's that it feels really great to fly with. I mean, I've heard people say that it looks like a brick and it doesn't make sense for the controls to be on the top and the screen to be on the bottom, but I really like it. It's unmatched in any of the other controllers I've actually used. It has a perfect weight for a controller in my opinion. The, the placement of, of the, uh, the thumbsticks actually works pretty well if you're a pincher, as well as if you're a thumber, so that's nice. And just in general, it feels it feels great. I even like it more than the, the Phantom 4 Pro uh, Plus remote with the screen attached. Just everything about the way that it feels is nice. And granted, this is my opinion. Feel free to disagree. Point number eight. Hotkey lovers will love this. So if you hold down the button on the top left, it'll actually pull up a screen that'll tell you everything that you can do. But you can use this to adjust brightness on the screen. You can use it to adjust the volume. Uh, start a screen recording, start a screenshot, um, even uh, use uh, Android uh, shortcuts like go to the home, go to the apps, go to the recent apps, that kind of stuff. And there are um, in total eight different things that these can do. They are not customizable, but they are super useful as is. And that is definitely a feature of this that I appreciate. 
Number nine, you can output your display to an HDMI device such as goggles or a TV, or I believe, I haven't tested this because they don't have a Chromecast, but if you go into the settings on here, so I'm gonna use a shortcut to go home, go to settings, and if you go to the option for display, there's an option for cast, which actually I believe refers to Chromecast or Chromecast-like devices. So if you can actually Chromecast with this, that would be kind of cool as well, especially if you, let's say, you're at a conference or something, you want to show your screen to some folks while you're flying. You don't have to have a, 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 a cable hanging out of this. You can just have a Chromecast device and then you can connect to that. And that's really cool. I'm hoping that works. I, I would like to know if anyone's tried it or if anyone has a Chromecast as well as the DJI Remote and can try it. If you can let me know if that works, that would be awesome. I appreciate that. So number 10, uh, I've seen a lot of people quote that this only has 16 gigabytes of storage on it. Uh, and I, that's actually wrong. It actually has 32 gigabytes. Uh, and most of that is taken up by the system. And granted, I also have some other stuff on there as well, such as apps and, and cached files. There's plenty of space on here. And you actually have the option when you insert the SD card to use that as an extension of your operating system. So that will allow you basically even more storage for system stuff. Or if you'd like, you can actually just put a SD card in there and you can use that as media storage. So you can copy media onto it or copy media off of it and then remove it afterwards. Those are your two options. If you do leave one in there for the additional uh, extension of the OS storage, what you can do is you can put a micro SD adapter onto this uh, and then put in a micro SD card in there and you can use that to transfer footage back and forth should you have the desire to do that. And that's actually a perfect segue to number 11. So this uh, USB port, in addition to supporting a uh, uh, USB adapter to micro SD, also supports uh, certain LTE hotspots. And I actually have one here with me today. I'm gonna go grab it and we're gonna see if it works. So this is obviously not the ideal hotspot given that it's chunky, but at least give us a, a baseline to test with. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. Make sure we have USB tethering on. So USB tether is on. And let's go to the settings on this and see if it's working. So hold down that button, go home. <clears throat> go to settings. We're looking underneath more and we're looking for tethering. So it says USB tethering not connected. Try to unplug it and plug it back in. So it's tethering detected. Would you like to turn off Wi-Fi? I choose yes. And it still says USB tethering not connected. Let's turn Wi-Fi off. Yeah, so I have no network on this thing. So, oddly enough, a self-powered device that outputs uh, internet via USB, the USB tether. In fact, I use this on, a, on the radio in my truck, which is Android, and, and it does USB tethering with that. This does not work, which is kind of odd to me. That said, if you are interested in doing USB tethering, you can definitely reach out to DJI support and ask them what is actually supported, but I don't know what's supported for that USB LTE tethering that they're talking about. And that leads us to the 12th and final point for this video. So that 12th point is it uses quick charge and it is amazing. If I use a normal 2.1 amp charger on this, it took me five hours to charge it fully. Using the DJI included quick charger, it only took two and a half hours. It literally half the time it took to charge. And that's awesome. Especially since this lasts at a minimum two and a half hours. Not that you will have one, but if you had a backup remote and you wanted to charge that while you're using the other remote that you had, you could in theory swap them back and forth and go forever, assuming that you had enough Mavic batteries. Or that goes back to the point of uh, the USB-C connection at the bottom. You can actually have this connected while you're using it and you essentially have an unlimited source of power to keep this powered up for you. 
So battery life really isn't even an issue at that point. So those are the 12 things that I think you need to know before you buy this. So I'm not actually going to be doing a full review on these. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and just tell you what I think right now. I'm not going to be buying the controller. In fact, I'm probably going to end up buying the Epson Ovarial FPV 300 um, or F, uh, BT 300 FPV like I planned to originally. I've been holding off because I saw this and I wanted to see what it's like, but I'm not sold on it. I really enjoy the extra perception that the uh, Epson Ovarials give you and this doesn't give you that and it's about the same price so I don't see why I wouldn't buy those instead but you might be different you might enjoy this you might get it at a good price you I really like the controller in general but the price is really just prohibiting me from getting into it if it was maybe 400 I think I would buy it but at the current price it's not for me and it might not be for you either that's up for you to decide I can't make that decision for you that said, this is the end of the video. I might come up with more things I think you need to know. I will add them to a pinned comment below this video. As it is with all lists, lists are never complete. So if I come up with anything else, I will certainly update you in the pinned comment. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you dislike it, I guess you can hit that button. Uh, but otherwise, make sure you subscribe to me if you're not. And if you have not hit the bell button, make sure you hit that as well because I put out lots of cool stuff. Um, some more interesting than this obviously. If you haven't seen it, you should go back and watch the video where I dropped the Insta1360 uh, at 400 feet from a drone. That was really cool. So I'm gonna link that video in the description as well. But yeah, that's much cooler than this. Make sure you watch that if you haven't. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you later.